We're at the beach this weekend and check this out. I saw this like crazy little uh, archway or something. I guess it's an old bridge that used to run through here and now it's been replaced by this fancy new bridge. But to me, it looked like a pretty good opportunity to an art mission. What do you say we change this thing into a zombie apocalypse fortress doorway? That sounds freaking good. So I think the trick is gonna be come here when there's no one here, get some fog in here, and then do a set extension, maybe a mask painting and a texture over that thing. I gotta get these people out of here, so I'll probably come back in the morning. All right, so it's 6 a.m. And as you can see, there's not that many people on the beach right now. It's overcast today. You have to take account for the lack of shadow, light direction, and desaturation. Here's our scene right here. We're gonna do a matte extension on there. Maybe add a little bit of a door or something on this cool little object. I saw it the other day, it was super cool. Man, I love this beach. I think the object here is to get the shot without the evidence of all the people. Hopefully the tide is out and I don't see any footsteps around the, uh, the doorway. As far as gear for the shot, I just have my G7X that I'm shooting on. Also brought my travel tripod and my Canova slider. Yeah, of course they're not pro, but they're light enough to fit in your travel kit. And I think the quality will be good enough, at least for us on YouTube. The sand is a nice place to shoot for sure, but it is unforgiving. These rails need to stay pristine. If you get any granules in there, and you can't get them blown out or there's something a little scratchy in there, it ruins your slider. You can't slide your camera in a nice smooth way. So make sure you don't do that. What I'm gonna do now is catch some B-roll. I wanna catch some shots of maybe the surf, uh, bits of something so that I can set my little doorway into a scene that's more than just one single shot. I think that would make it a little more interesting. Even though it's just an art mission, it's kind of cool to go a little bit of the extra mile. So make sure when you're getting your shot that you're also taking textures, texture shots, because those textures are what you're gonna put into your matte painting to make it look exactly like the objects that are already in scene. When you're shooting a texture, you want as much ambient light as possible. You don't really want to have a bunch of shadows on it and you don't want it to be pre-lit. So this uh, overcast clouds or this fog, that's kind of this high fog that's here has really washed out all the hard light. So it's allowing me to take really great pictures of the concrete and the water and the sand that I'm gonna to use to integrate more elements into this shot. Well, that was a blast. It's kind of getting a little late because I'm starting to have to shoot around people and dogs and the light is starting to change a little bit. So I'm gonna get a coffee and then I'll see you guys in the studio and we'll see what we got. Now that I'm back in the studio, I'll take my time to create a couple of ideas and we call them thumbnails and I'll sketch these out over the plate that I took and the plate is the frame of film that I chose and then what I'm going to do later is turn those into matte paintings or mats and textures and apply those back over the video and try to make a composite that looks convincing and looks like it came right out of the apocalypse. So there's a few designs that I work on. This first one's kind of like a rambling fort. It's kind of like maybe an old western fort. There's lots of layers to it. There's a couple doors and a couple towers. It looks cool, but I'm not totally convinced that I like it. So I move on to a second design, 
The second design is kind of like a big wall concept. It's a big wall on the ocean that's supposed to be foreboding. I think it says go back or stay away. And then there's towers in there. And then it's basically saying like, don't come here. But the problem with that design is I kind of feel like it leaves a viewer wanting more or it doesn't tell enough of the story. It is mysterious, but it doesn't really give me a sense of destination because all you see are a few towers and just a big wall. Also in that composition, I didn't like how the towers just drew your eyes to the left and off the page. I kind of felt like there's nothing terminating on the left that felt like it helped the story along. So I ditched that idea for a composition that had some larger buildings in it. And this one I was actually pretty happy with because the buildings felt like uh, a real location. and. The age on the buildings and the burn marks and the pieces that were of rubble that were coming off them kind of gave a sense of like what happened to this area. They tell a story and they also talk about like the type of people that could live there or might still be living there. And graphically, I just like the idea that there's this wall and then on the other side of it, you could definitely see like, ooh, this must be where the people are going. So there's a strong sense of destination in the third composition that wasn't really present in the first two com uh, compositions. In the final image there'll be some smoke and a lot of little detail pieces. Make sure when you're working on a project like this that you keep everything in layers so that they're usable in After Effects later on. So I keep all my buildings on a layer, I keep all my walls on a layer, and stuff like smoke or sparks or things that I'll do as an effect in actual After Effects, I make sure those are on a layer so I can turn them off and they don't mess up my background. I also shot this frame in a way that because, I, and I was happy about this because I knew that this gray sky would be really easy to do composites over, so I think that was kind of working the situation to my advantage and that's I suggest that to you don't pick for your first few projects something that's totally complicated this is a fairly complicated scene but it has its advantages in the sense that it's the lighting is not very strong it's there's a lot of ambient lighting and there's not a lot of shadows and I picked a very a fairly flat angle and there's not a lot of clouds or stuff to mask out for the final image so now we're moving on to After Effects and I'm looking forward to seeing this project come alive over the video and hopefully at the end we end up with something that's totally convincing and totally sells the apocalypse. I had to rely a ton on my Photoshop skills to kind of work around my deficiencies in After Effects but basically I cut my mat up and then I, you can see me working on getting it into perspective. I had to motion track a bunch of separate areas with smaller mats instead of one big one especially because that bridge was coming in in perspective. So what you want to do is look on YouTube for set extensions and After Effects motion tracking tutorials. That will kind of get you in a good spot. Also get some color correction skills off YouTube and you can kind of get that nice look. It was a lot of fun and it wasn't a ton of energy to get done and I was thankful though that I had the Photoshop skills so make sure you have your mats cut up and done in a way that will work with your scene. I'm pretty excited about this. That wasn't too bad. That was a lot of fun. It only took a few hours and I got a freaking great piece of art for my portfolio. So I would suggest you guys do something cool too. Go on a cool art mission and let me know what it was. I'd love to see it. All right. I love hanging out with you guys. Subscribe. Give me a like if you want. I really appreciate it. Take care. Have a great one.